are AMD drivers really more stable than Nvidia's? What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. A Toronto-based company called QA Consultants did a 12-day head-to-head test comparing the drivers for the two major graphics companies. All the machines had the Windows 10 April 2018 update and were tested the exact same way in both gaming and professional use. After running for 12 days straight, 24 hours a day, the AMD products passed 93% of the scheduled tests, while the Nvidia ones passed 82%. So based on their results, it seems like AMD takes the cake by a massive 11%, right? Well, why don't we look at the actual testing? The first question you might ask yourself is, how many GPUs did they use? Well, there were only 12 total, which means that the test was based on 6 AMD GPUs and 6 Nvidia ones. Plus, the cards tested ranged from prosumer to consumer cards. The consumer ones for AMD was the 560, the 580, and the Vega 64. For Nvidia, it was the 1050, 1060, and 1080 Ti. For the pros, you had three Radeon Pros and three Quadros. It also seems like the Pro cards had a little bit of a harder time passing all of the tests. I'll leave a link to the report down below, but I just don't think that this test on such a small scale and such a small span of time is really conclusive. If they had done this on multiple of the same GPUs and also on the longer span of time, maybe I'd consider it more of a reliable test. I mean, those tests are equivalent to me saying AMD is more reliable because I've never had any AMD cards stop working but my 1060 died a few months ago. I might be thick, but I'm not a big enough sample size. Now you guys know that I'm far from a fanboy when it comes to graphics. I'll take whatever goes faster, but it pains me to see research done at such a small scale, especially when AMD is the one who commissioned the research. So let me throw this back to you. What do you think? Was it a big enough sample size to really see a difference? I mean, the test was fair since it's the exact same amount of products on both sides and the tests were the same, but it just seems like a little bit of randomness here might be a factor. Moving on, an unlikely alliance has formed to try and take on Amazon. Can you guess who? That's right, Microsoft and Walmart. Right now, this partnership is only related to cloud services, meaning that for the five-year agreement, Walmart will use Azure and Microsoft 365 across the company, and they have some new projects focused on machine learning, AI, and data platforms. But what is really interesting is that Microsoft has been working on a rival to Amazon Go. They've been experimenting with attaching cameras to the shopping carts to track the items. That basically means that Walmart might be the first guinea pig for Microsoft's new system. Speaking of Microsoft, their Surface Phone prototype is apparently going back to the drawing board. According to sources within Microsoft, the Surface device went back to the lab because it doesn't meet the standards that the company has for the Surface brand. I am a little intrigued because while Surface devices have always been high-end, the latest Surface Go just isn't that high-end. So I believe that the issue might lie elsewhere. Maybe it didn't look good enough? I guess for Microsoft, it's a do or die situation since none of their phone has been successful. So I'm guessing that really they want this one to be perfect. And now in gaming news, No Man's Sky finally revealed its multiplayer mode and it looks awesome. I mean, yes, it should have been this way since the start, but alas, two years later, we get what we wanted. Here's the announcement of the feature. You'll be able to explore the universe with your friends or bump into random travelers. You can help friends to stay alive or prey on others to survive. Your group can build anything from tiny shelters to complex colonies spanning planets, and everything is shared online for others to visit. Fight as a pirate or a wingman in epic space battles with friends and enemies. Race exocrafts across weird alien terrains, creating race tracks and maybe just scenic trails to share online. I mean, I don't think I have a choice. I'll have to buy the game now. The update will be available in a week on July 24th. I just hope that with the whole survival aspect, the game won't turn into a GTA 5 situation where I couldn't join a server without somebody coming from my head instantly. So what do you guys think? Is it finally a good game? Let me know down below. And now to answer a question from you guys, and today it is Battlefield or Call of Duty? Dude, that's a pretty divisive question, but I'll answer it. My answer, 
Call of Duty. Now there's a reason for it. When I play first person shooters, I like to quick get in, play a quick game and leave. That's why I prefer Call of Duty and Overwatch and games like this. Also, I pretty much only play the Treyarch version because zombies. What about you guys? Battlefield, Call of Duty, what do you prefer? All right, so don't forget to leave a question that I can answer down below. That's pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to click right here to see the latest video. It's gonna be right dippity there and right here to subscribe to the channel it's gonna be right subity there so yeah it's not as hot today i like that although i still have to turn on my ac but it's not that hot which is an advantage right so stay frosty and i'll see you on the next one stay frosty yes i said it twice